For the first time in nearly 20 years, the GOP gubernatorial candidate has a fighting chance of winning in the Democratic stronghold of New York. We're going to break down Lee Zeldin's chances of defeating incumbent Kathy Hochul on this episode of Happy Warriors. So Dominic, tell us about this race. Obviously, New York has been reliably blue for a very long time, but polls are showing that Lee Zeldin, the Republican candidate, has a fighting chance against Kathy Hochul. He's within about six points in some of the polls. Obviously, last time there was a governor race here, Andrew Cuomo won by upwards of 20 points. What has Governor Hochul done to bring us to this point? Why is it maybe possible, is it possible that a Republican could win in the state of New York? And what are the factors that play into this and might change between now and Election Day? Yeah, that's right. I mean, the uh, no Republican has won the governor's election in New York since 2002 when uh, George Pataki won. And uh, that is ancient history in political time. In world historical time, though, it's not that long ago. And so it suggests that there is a possible path for a Republican to win in this state. Uh, but, of course, uh, Zeldin still has an uphill climb. No poll has actually showed him leading yet. The best poll he had uh, showed him only losing by two points, which would still be a very, very strong performance for a Republican. It reminds you of uh, last year's New Jersey governor's race, where uh, Jack Cittarelli somehow almost knocked off Phil Murphy out of absolutely nowhere. And so uh, there's a little bit of that going on. But uh, but Zeldin has been relentless on the issues of law and order and on reminding voters what Kathy Hochul did during the COVID pandemic and all of the various uh, lockdown policies that New York did that a lot of other states didn't do. Yeah, I want to get to the lockdown policies in just a second. But let's just talk about the issue of crime for a minute because you're right, Zeldin is leaning hard into this. And New York City especially is experiencing a wave of crime, not, nothing on par with the 1990s, but for sure much, much higher than it's been in the last 20 years. And I'm wondering if that has something to do with the fact that the last time a Republican was in, was in, in office, we had Giuliani as the mayor, obviously, mm -hmm. and Pataki as the governor. The la that was the last time that crime was really a major focus of electoral politics in the state. Uh, what specifically is happening here? Where have the Democrats dropped the ball? And how could that affect uh, Hochul's chances of staying in office. Yeah, I do have to say, just coming in this morning from Northern Virginia, where I live, coming in from Penn Station to uh, to the NR offices here, I noticed a lot more police. And this was a this was a, a calculated choice by the elected officials in New York to do that um, to show people as we're going into the election that they actually do care about public safety. Now. It's a good thing. They should care about public safety. And it would be great if there was that kind of police presence all the time, not just in election season. New York has the capability to do it. Wall Street Journal editorial board pointed out that New York's state budget is about twice uh, as large as Florida's, despite Florida now having more people than New York. So they definitely have the money. Um, it's just a matter of prioritizing it to the right things. And uh, law and order and, and police presence and making sure that people feel safe, especially riding public transportation in New York City, but just in general, uh, making sure that we have sufficient police is something that uh, Zeldin has been prioritizing. And even if he loses, uh, if he can at least get the message across to the elected Democrats who will stay in power, that that's something they need to prioritize. That's still a win for people in New York. Right. So if Zeldin doesn't pull off, maybe he gets within two points or so, what does that look, what does that change, or what could that mean maybe for down ballot Republicans across the state? Does the Republicans have any chance of reclaiming the legislature? What's, what's the outlook in the rest of the state? Yeah, that's one of the promising things for Republicans, even if Zeldin doesn't win, um, because uh, at the state level, the New York State Assembly is, is, is gonna, gonna stay blue. The Senate will also most likely stay blue. Republicans would need to pick up uh, 12 seats there. That would be a pretty, uh, a pretty impressive achievement if they're able to pull that off. But where it really shows is in the House of Representatives, because uh, at the federal level, there's about seven competitive House races in New York this year, which is unusual. That's that's a little bit more than usually is. And uh, if Zeldin can do well enough uh, statewide, even if he comes up a few points short of actually becoming the governor. 
he can still pull a lot of those House candidates across the finish line. And remember, Republicans only need to flip three or four seats uh, to regain the House majority. And so if they can get seven in New York, the other 49 states are just gravy. And I think that that's one of the that's one of the huge points of actually having all this media coverage about Zeldin possibly winning because a lot of Republicans in the state of New York just go, well, my vote doesn't matter. And yeah. being someone who just changed my voter <laughs> registration to the state of New York, I, I'm much more motivated to go out and vote. I probably would have anyways because I'm generally pretty involved in politics, but that's not the case for everyone. And so for there to be an actual chance of seeing something flip at the statewide level means that people are gonna go out and vote down ballot, which is neat. Um, so let's talk about the, the lockdown policies, because that's obviously something that Hochul was really big on. Obviously, Cuomo was big on that as well. He was, he was very, um, he was known as a bit of a tyrant around here, even before the sexual assault allegations came out. Um, many people would put signs of him peering into windows in, in New York restaurants, and obviously mm. there was um, very draconian um, requirements about when you had to close your, your business and, and all these things that didn't make any sense, weren't backed by the science, despite him having this reputation as this science guru. Um, what, uh, what specifically did, you, did New York do wrong and how did Hochul do things worse from other blue state governors? Yeah, I think there's a noticeable difference between Hochul and Cuomo just in terms of political talent. Right. I, think that, I think that's pretty clear. Yep. Uh, Cuomo, for all of his faults, uh, was pretty good at working the New York machine and was pretty good at doing that. Hochul does not seem to have that capability. I don't think anybody is, you know, there was talk of Cuomo running for president. I don't think anybody yeah. on planet Earth wants Kathy Hochul no. to run for president, even if, you, even if you're a Democrat and you vote for her. And, and, and the, the, yeah, the COVID stuff is, is stuff that people aren't going to forget. I mean, this was something that split, uh, that Bill de Blasio actually had a better approach on, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. was truly not something you could say about it really anything else. And I, I think it's interesting because a lot of blue state Democrats sort of went about it from the perspective of something we have to do to keep others safe. We don't really like it, but we, this, is sort of, this is what has to happen. This, that was the pitch. But Hochul, especially, she just kind of took over once the vaccines were starting to come in. So, I mean, Cuomo obviously had his thing where he was just locking everything down, but this was really pre-vaccine. And then Hochul made kind of getting vaccinated a part of like a, a personality trait almost. Like mm -hmm. had, she had the necklace that said vaxxed. Yeah, yeah. Um, she was out there requiring um, businesses to prevent entrance if you weren't vaccinated, which is something that we're now realizing, or now, the science is now confirming that there's no, there's nothing to back that up, right? Mm -hmm. like, um, the vaccines, by and large, aren't preventing transmission. Uh, and yet that was something that really early on she was leaning into really um, creating sort of two tiers of, of citizenship, with, especially in, in New York City. So I think that that probably had a pretty big impact or does have a pretty big impact on how New Yorkers and especially people in New York City see her. And, and I, I think that that has a lot to do with what's happening here. Yeah, I think that's got to be right. And I, I go back to New Jersey again. I mean, Phil Murphy was also very strict. I mean, he was stricter than New York on some things, I'm pretty sure. And he was one of the strictest governors in the country. And again, last year, you know, he he almost lost. I mean, it, there was sure. there was nobody, nobody had that on their map as a thing. Everyone was focused on Virginia. Right. Uh, right. You know, and that's a much more competitive state. I mean, that, that wasn't a, a dumb thing to do. But uh but I think the COVID policies played a real role in making that race competitive. And so, and so I think we're seeing a similar thing here in New York. Yeah. All right. So Kathy Hochul may lose her election in New York, but another race that has been very competitive is getting even more competitive uh, is the GOP election in Arizona. And if you want to see Rich Lowry's breakdown of why Carrie Lake is the breakout star of the Republican Party in 2022, what specific traits she has that put, give her an edge as a candidate, click right here to watch that breakdown.